you're going to learn about drawing objects in perspective today. And you're going to hate every minute of it. Every minute of it. <laughs> hey, this isn't the supply closet. Is someone in my voice? Oh no, I know that voice. Hello! Hi, Mr. Sphere. I don't get many visitors. Can I get you anything? Water? Fanta? Giraffe milk? What? No! Don't freak out about it. It's chilled. Have a seat. Nice couch. And it's in perspective. The perspective lines are a handy feature that came with this void. This is perfect for my lesson. I can tell the kids to start by blocking out the space that the couch will take up, and then think through the pieces that the couch is made of. We'll use the construction method that we covered in an earlier lesson. For example, that base is just a simple cube. We can block that in using our perspective lines. The back of the couch? also a cube. The sides of the couch, just two more cubes. And the cushions, you guessed it, Cube City. There, we're done. My couch looks a lot more comfortable. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I'm, I'm pretty bad at that part. Ha! I can help! I read an entire book about this! My book? Yes! That's the one I'm looking for. Hand it over so I can get out of here. Yeah, about that. Really? Don't worry! I memorized the whole thing! I'll walk you through it. Some things you just want to look less boxy. Those couch cushions you can just round off and make the shapes look more organic. But for more geometric areas, you have to be able to draw more than just cubes in perspective. For the arms of the couch, you can use a cylinder. Start by drawing a circle in perspective. Yeah, that's the part I don't like. A circle fits inside a square. So let's put a square on the arm of the couch, and then put our circle inside that. Yeah, that's the part that's going to take some practice. And it's OK if it takes a couple of tries to get that circle to look good in perspective. I know it takes me a couple tries. I always try to remember that when we're drawing a circle in a square, the edges of the circle are going to touch the square where the center point is. And the same thing's gonna be true when we're drawing a circle in perspective. There you go. And then I could go in and erase the lines I don't need anymore. And then anywhere else on the couch, like along the top cushions, I can round off using the same technique. I hear him in the supply closet. Is he talking to that crazy sphere? Oh no, should we help him? Absolutely not. The kids, I hear the kids. Kids, tell the people watching they need to subscribe. What did he say? Tell the fecal matter to hide. And ring that bell. Fling that smell. Definitely fling that smell. Well, I think I made a pretty nice catch. You did great. Why are you being so nice to me today? I thought we were enemies. Nah, we're frenemies. I lull you into a false sense of security and then stab you in the back. Now you have to draw something in perspective and at scale. No, I hate figuring out how to scale things. Don't make me do scale. You have to do scale. All right, let's draw a car right here on the street. How do we figure out the scale of the car when we're drawing it in a scene? First, I'm gonna rough out a cube and I'm gonna do that in perspective, roughly where I want the car to go, right about here on the street. The car I'm going to draw isn't going to be as tall as a person. It's gonna be a little bit shorter. What can I use to figure out the scale of that? How about this door in the background? I know that that's going to be taller than a person, so I want to use that as my basis to figure out the scale of this car. I'm going to run some perspective lines down from my box towards the vanishing point. I'm also going to run some lines away from the door. Where those lines intersect tells me what the height of the door would be at this location. If I follow those green lines back, that's going to help me figure out what the door is going to look like in the location where my car currently is. Since I want my car to be shorter than the door, I'm going to cut off the top of that box. This will give me the rough scale of my car that I'm going to draw. Your success has taken me by surprise. Ha, I still got it. Wait, where'd you go? Shoot, well, might as well finish this car. We're gonna use the construction technique we used on the couch. Right here, I have a little sketch of the side view of the car that I'm gonna use as a reference. I'm just gonna box out the bottom of the car, drawing that box in perspective. The top box is a little tricky because as you can see here, it's on an angle. I'm gonna just start with a basic cube that's not on an angle and then shave off the parts that I don't need. On the top of the cube, I'm gonna start by drawing a line across the top of the car. And then I can draw a straight line from where that line intersects here down to this corner down here. I'm going to do that on the other side as well. Then I can remove the original lines and now I have a nice angle 
that's in perspective. I'm gonna repeat this process by drawing a line along the back of the cube and drawing two more angled lines to figure out the back angle of the car window as well. Did you catch all that? Yep. Yeah, but can he do the tires without me? You, you have to let him out. Believe it or not, he's the best art teacher we've ever had. Yeah, he's bad, but he's not as bad as the last one. Scotch tape, in my days we used whale rubber as adhesive. For the tires, I'm gonna reuse the cube method I used on the couch. Draw a cube where the tire goes. Draw the best circle I can, inside that cube. Draw the flat part of the tire along the bottom. Then we're gonna draw in the back part of the tire, which is just another circle that's going to match the circle in front of it. We're just not gonna see the back parts of that circle. Some of the other details, like the grill of the car, are just a bunch of lines that follow our perspective lines. I'm gonna use the angle method again, but this time I'm gonna use it to add a ridge to the car's hood. These sorts of things do take some practice, they're worth playing around with and worth trying out just to see what you come up with. Right now, I'm gonna keep this car pretty boxy just to keep it simple and easy to practice along with. We can hear you! It's the students! Can you hear me? Yes, that's literally what I just said. I have an activity for you! Uh, draw another car. This time, put it somewhere else on the grid. What I want you to do is try to understand scale. Use the grid to help you. You could try drawing a car behind the current car we have, or you can try drawing one on the other side of the street. If you wanna use the same perspective grid and the same background that I have here to work from, you can download it at bradsartschool.com. I have a handful of lesson resources over there. We can totally do this. Totally. You have to free him. Fine, but only if he passes my final challenge. What's your final challenge? He must draw a person in perspective from a weird angle or he will be forever trapped in my torture void. Hmm, I like that. It's really creamy. Mr. Brad, you have to draw a person from this weird top-down angle. What? You gotta be kidding me. Nope, not kidding you. Okay, here we go. Just like we did with the car, I'm gonna block out the space where our person goes by drawing a cube in perspective. I'm gonna be using the posing method we covered in a previous video. In that video, we talked about the seven head principle, the one that said that humans are about seven heads tall. This is gonna help me with my proportions. I wanna figure out the center point of our box, and to do that, I'm gonna draw lines from one corner corner of the box down to the other corner and then do it again going in the other direction. I'm also gonna do this on the top and the bottom of my box. That's gonna help me find the center line. That's gonna be the midpoint of my body. Now if we take a look at our figure over here, the hip line is about smack dab in the middle of our seven headed figure. So I'm gonna rough that in too. I'm gonna rough in the head so that it hits the middle of our little center line here. And for the body, I'm going to use a box. That's just gonna help me understand this three dimensional perspective character a little bit better than just lines will. To keep it simple for now, I'm going to just use some cylinders for the arms and some cylinders for the legs. Just keep it in basic, simple shapes here. Now I know looking at this, I made it look really easy, but with everything when it comes to drawing, it takes practice. Where you're probably gonna run into trouble while doing this is figuring out the head proportion. Once you get the head size right, everything else seems to fall into place. I personally have a tendency to draw my heads Kind of big. I know, shocking. Once you get all your perspective lines and your box into place, it can be a little tedious to do that over and over if the proportions of your character just aren't right. One thing you might wanna try doing is once you get that stuff in place is put a piece of paper over and trace where you think your character is gonna go within that box. That way if you get it wrong, you just move the paper over and try again and just practice drawing the character over and over again instead of wasting time redrawing those perspective lines. There we go. Once it looks good, I can clean up my character and add some detail. Yeah, we did it! You know, I kind of like this void. Hey, kids! I'm back! Yay! Where's the sphere? I thought he was here with you. He was. He disappeared when he zapped back here. Home sweet void. Hey, where? where's my giraffe? You won't pay for this, Mr. Brad! You shall pay!